Otherwise, hi, Sandra. Reno, cool. Hey, Frank. Hola. Where are you from? <laughs> There's Dr. Karen. Dr. Karen, are you hey, live? I am live now. Okay, good. Technical okay. glitches. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Jean. How you doing? Ah, oh, Dennis, Dennis from you're from, from the Master Circle. Great. Cool. Jim Folsom, beautiful. Okay, well, I'm going to go, you know, I, I apologize again for the late start, technical glitches. This is how things go, what, what I'm, my experience has been for every freaking webinar I've ever done. <laughs> so let's go <laughs> ahead and give you, start giving you the goods. So I'm just going to go right to a screen share, Karen, and we'll, tell, tell, uh, we'll introduce ourselves, let everyone know a little bit our, about, uh, about us and about podcasting. And let's see here. Hold on one sec. Hi to Dennis. Actually, Dennis, we said hello to you. Frank, Jordan, Jean, Jim. Awesome to have you guys all here. Stoked to present today. Dr. Kerr, okay, why don't you start uh, sharing a little bit about yourself sure. first? Yeah, I'd love to. So I am a chiropractor, as is Ed. I uh, graduated about 14 and a half years ago, and, uh, and I opened our, our office, which is in St. Albert, Alberta, Canada, in 2002. And in the meantime, the reason I'm on this podcast today is I started a podcast which is called Mom at 41. And that was almost a year ago, actually. It'll be a year anniversary, July 29th. And uh, I had been blogging on my chiropractic office, our chiropractic office website for a few years, and I shared a lot of the struggles that I had as a mom. It's called Mom at 41 because I became a mom for the first time at the age of 41, Ed and I actually ended up adopting our two boys, Tyson and Kai. And uh, there was just a lot of struggles I found with it. And so sharing that on the blog, the ones, the, the blogs that I did on parenting, and I did ones, of course, in chiropractic and nutrition and exercise and mindset, but the ones on parenting, like, just blew up. Like, there was all these comments, and, and people would talk to me in the office about it, and they'd email me. So after a while, I just kind of realized that there needs to be a space for this. And the common theme I was getting from a lot of moms and that was whether they're stay-at-home or working moms or professional moms like myself, that they felt like they weren't enough. They felt like they, didn't, they weren't doing this. They were screwing everything up, and yet they couldn't really have the conversation with their friends and their family because they felt judged, and they felt like they were all alone. They were the only one that was not the perfect mom. And so that was really my idea of creating Mom at 41 is to really help moms embrace their imperfections and to create this community. And uh, in the meantime, since that as well, too, I uh, also am a doTERRA wellness advocate and teaching lots of moms how to create financial abundance. But the podcast is really what started it all, and that's why I'm so thrilled to be on here with Ed today. Okay, so Ed, we can see your screen now. Yay. We are good, yeah. Okay, so um, here's, here's what we need to talk about is me. So the chiropractic philanthropist, uh, who doesn't know about the chiropractic philanthropist? It's been out there. I created this podcast actually August. We're coming up on our anniversary. So August of last year, um, I created the entire podcast within four weeks. I had zero broadcast experience. And yet, you know what? That didn't stop me. And even after about three months of just having my podcast out there and my purpose really just to connect with my community of, of doctors, of chiropractors, I'll tell you a little bit more about my entire story later. But it was really, you know, after just three months, I realized that it was an incredible way to connect not just with people within my profession, so chiropractors, but I was connecting with people all over the world. Now, that may be important to you, Doc, may be important to you to you know, establish your expertise, your authority within your, even your community locally. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the amazing benefits of the networking. I mean, think about it, within th two months, I was on the phone with people that I, in our profession, that I was in, sitting in seminars and listening to. And now I was on the phone chatting with them and asking them for advice and, and making uh, arrangements and joint ventures. And all of these things can happen within your own community when you actually have your podcast, you have that authority that, and you can book these people in your community that are local experts and build those relationships. It's an incredible networking tool. And that's what kind of what I want to focus on today. But one of the biggest things too that we haven't talked about, and I get this from doctors all the time, is Dr. Ed, I get it. Sounds great. Where do I find the content? The other thing that they want to, they, they also know or want to know is, tell me, Dr. Ed, what exactly is a podcast and how difficult 
is it for me to actually create my own podcast? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw up the, because in the reason I'm going to do this is because I always forget to do this. I'm going to actually throw up the enrollment uh, form. Don't say throw up. That sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put up the or place post. It. Yeah. Place the, I got to load this because we had a technical difficulty. <laughs> I'm going to load that now because it's only going to be up for an hour. Okay, so there's an offer there, Dr. K. Can you see the offer? Should be on the right hand side I... in the webinar GM. Hold on. Yes, I do. Okay, That's great. Good to go. Okay, yep. So yep. that is the enrollment page. For anyone who wants to go and link over to there, don't worry, you're not going to lose the webinar if you do and you go and take a look because it has a clock on it because there's going to be some special offers today that we're going to give to uh, anyone who enrolls in TCP today that has, uh, we've never given these away before. And I'm going to tell you what those offers are right now because I know doctors are time starved. They're going to be bouncing in and out of the webinar as we go. Here's the, here's the bonuses. I'm actually going to send you, uh, everyone who enrolls today, I'm going to send you the exact same mic. We're going to ship it to you that I use on uh, TCP Podcast. So that mic is an Audio-Technica ATR2100. It is a, over $100 value. And everyone who enrolls today, you get that mic. I have used mics that are of incredible production quality. And I always come back to this one. I love this mic. It's great. My dogs can be barking like crazy and it still gives you great tone. Doesn't pick up all these flops and things like that too. So yeah, I like that one way. If I can interject too, Ed, we, <laughs> we, you got a, you got a much more expensive one. And then we got it. And I was like, I hate this thing. Like it just, <laughs> it always came back to that one. It's, it's a great, great mic. I, I love it. And yeah, yeah it's, I've done a few recordings and even the audio quality, I didn't like it. So that's one of the things we're going to throw up today is or th where I'm going to get include in the program today uh, for any enrollees over this, uh, this time period, we're going to give them my common sense ROF, which is really just the ROF that I used that you don't sound like a robot. And uh, it built my rock and family busy practice. Um, and my Facebook funnel, because I'm going to talk about marketing. We're not just going to get people, uh, doctors up and launched on their podcast, but we want to actually give them ways that they can actually market. So we are going to give them my Facebook funnel system so they can actually use Facebook as a social media tool to increase and funnel people into their office. Now, here's, here's the kicker. I'm giving my accelerator membership. Now, my accelerator membership is a $400 value, which means I am going to personally set up your Libsyn account. And you may be going, Doc, what is a Libsyn account? Libsyn is the biggest block most docs have when they go to actually creating their podcast. They get everything done and creative, and then they go, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of Libsyn. I'm going to do all of that, tweak it for SEO, and get you approved on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. That is a four hundred dollar value. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna take out most of the work for most docs that are here on this webinar today. If they decide to enroll with TCP for that lifetime membership that we have, I'm not done. I got one more bonus, and that is actually I am launching TCP video podcasting. Do not underestimate the value of video podcasting on iTunes. It's new, it's innovative. I'm gonna show you how you can repurpose your blogs and place them onto iTunes video podcasting. It's a $590 value. That program is gonna be actually launched in about two weeks and that's the, uh, that's the investment that'll be on there. All right, so let's get started. I told Dr. Karen if I start talking really fast to tell me to slow down, because that's what I tend to do. So let's go ahead. I do too, ahead. so we're, so we're kind of screwed. <laughs> 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 all right, so here's the thing. Podcasting is all about when I created my podcast, and Dr. Kieran, um, maybe it's the same thing, but when I was looking at podcasting for chiropractors on a local basis, it's really about bigger. the biggest challenge is they want more time and they want more freedom, and this I can definitely relate to, is I wanted more time with my kids, with my family, be at home, not taking time away from myself, like going and, and doing screenings on the weekend, going and doing workshops, not that I didn't love doing those things, but I wanted to create something that I I could record one time, then I could market it, you know, to multiple people. I mean, imagine this doctor having your own broadcast, your own 
podcast on iTunes. And even if you would like to have that door to go in and do a corporate lecture at one of those uh, you know, places that are in your community, and you can't get in that door, well, you could say, well, hey, I have a podcast. I'm an expert. I have a podcast. I've inter you know, interviewed these experts. Um, I've been downloaded this many times and listened to in this many countries. That's your in as well into those corporate um, settings, even if you would like to do those one-on-one -on -one talks. So it saves you time. It, it helps you actually give your unique message. So I'm going to take everyone here into our Facebook community today. In our Facebook community, we have over just under 100 doctors in that who are on the TCP podcast uh, program. And I want you to see the interaction that's going on there because it is amazing. We are, again, a community. It's so cool. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Karen? Absolutely. And I, I think the community is the part that people don't really understand. So maybe hopefully by showing this, we'll kind of get a little bit of a better idea of how valuable that it is to bounce ideas off. What do you think of my artwork? What do you think of this doctorate? Asking those that have been podcasting for a few months or myself or Ed is, is, is worth it itself in the program. But it's, yeah, the Facebook group is awesome. We've got a really good group there. We're also going to talk about educating your practice members. How important, Doc, is it to educate your patients or practice members? Not only that, is how important is it to continually add value to them, right, so that they are seeing themselves as your office. You are unique. You add value. You are the doctor with the podcast that is in their back pocket. Because 50 or 60% of the people who listen to podcasts, it might even be higher. I'll look at that stat in a moment. They are listening to your podcast on their mobile phone or in their vehicle. So Apple iPlay is actually going to be installed in all 2006 manufactured vehicles. Imagine that doctor, you, your patient is driving to work and they're listening to your voice. So it's no longer that you're sending out a letter, a thank you note, that you're waiting for them to come into your office to connect with them in email. Now you actually have them subscribe to your podcast. They are walking around with you on their mobile every day. You've, you're an arm's length away, doctor, from your patients. That's the power of podcasting. So there's the Audio Technica. Again, everyone who enrolls today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send that, uh, that over to you. Uh, does anyone know who this guy is? Dr. Karen, do you know who this, do you recognize this guy? You mean BJ? <laughs> I don't know who the other dude is, but that's BJ. <laughs> so BJ, Palmer knew the power of, I think he was the first chiropractic broadcaster, right? So this is not an entirely new concept. What is the new concept is the innovation. So now it is easier for anyone in the world to create their own broadcast and to get it to 550 million subscribers on iTunes. Now, when I say a subscriber, that means people who actually go into iTunes and listen to podcasts at least one or two times on a monthly basis. Now, when they subscribe as well to your podcast, it means that your podcast, every time you create a new one, it is uploaded onto their mobile phone or into their vehicle um, automatically as soon as you create a podcast. So this is what a podcast is. It's an audio file, a broadcast that is on iTunes radio, which is free. Okay, or Stitcher Radio, and there's more platforms that are being created, and people are accessing them, and it continues to grow every year. So who cares? Let me let me go into a few of the stats on why you should care about this. Okay, who is listening to podcasts? You can see that more and more people every year are listening to podcasts. It is the mainstream way to educate and market within your practice, okay? And to add value to those people. Just like 10 years ago, you had to have a website, you need to have a podcast doctor. So it's very powerful, but one of the main things that we're seeing is that when people are listening, again, they're on their mobile phone, you're walking around with that, uh, with them, again, just an arm's length away. And they are very educated. So if we look at Edison Research, you know, the people who are listening to podcasts, most of them have actually a college degree. Not only that is that they find that they have six-figure incomes. I mean, doctor, we're talking about, you know, these are your ideal clients. Now, if let's say that you're maybe a coach or a chiropractic coach or a lifestyle coach or you have some other sort of program. I mean, these again are your ideal clients that you want to create your podcast for because maybe someone's listening today and they're thinking, well, I don't necessarily want to create this for my patients. Maybe you want to create it for something that you're something also uh, another, you know, something else that you're 
very passionate about, I don't know, maybe gardening. You know, like it could be anything, curling if you're a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really boring, I shouldn't say that, there could be some curlers, I don't want to offend anybody. However, <laughs> there is a podcast for everything out there, it's a good example. It is a good example. This is why you should be podcasting. Again, this is from Edison Research. Podcasting continues to grow. You know, it's it's actually just almost surpassing AM FM radio listenership. So huge. And again, no time has there ever been such an easy, like I shouldn't say, um, it's very high tech, but it's very easy to get into this market. And there's a reason why iTunes loves podcasting and why is because people who go in to iTunes store and listen to the podcasts, which are free, they tend to start looking around. So they go and they buy books, they go and they buy videos, they go and they buy music. So this is why um, it will always be free with uh, iTunes as well. All right, Dr. Karen, here's, let's talk about content because this is the biggest question I get or one of the biggest questions is, okay, Dr. Ed, I see all the value here. Now, where the heck am I going to get the content for a weekly podcast? So can, yeah. you, can you share on that? I would love to. So like we, um, I don't know if you've ever shared this yet, but like we, we, had, we had wanted to do a podcast together on an online program that we created about exercise, nutrition, and chiropractic and purpose. It never really came together. So we kind of branched out into separate ways. And so my concern was, and maybe this is for doctors that are listening as well too, is like, Oh geez, how am I going to get gas? It seems like a lot of work to do that and schedule it. And I got now I got to edit things. Like, isn't there an easier way? And I was listening to a podcast, and I don't remember which one it was. And they talked about how they repurposed their blogs and they essentially made those into podcast episodes. And I was like, like light bulb, like you know, I'm like, <laughs> holy crap! I have all these blogs. I could do something with them. I could literally freaking just read my blogs and put a little something at the beginning, at the end, and maybe some kind of an action step. And I would be good to go. So it was kind of from then forward at the end of May of last year, I kind of said, okay, I'm going to do this podcast. Here's what I can do. And that's how I got started. And so it was a way for me to take content I already had and then actually put it into uh, a podcast episode. So um, yeah, it was an easy place to start. So if anyone that currently has a blog, this is a no brainer. It is easy to start that way. Do you want me to share a little bit more, Dr. Ed, like how I do it or? You know, I, I think also one of the good points would be that you had mentioned something about, you know, post, you, you have your written blog, but you also have your podcast. So it's almost like you're, you know, because both are very powerful for SEO or search engine optimization. And some people like to consume information via written words. Some people like to hear it via audio. Yeah, what, what I basically did is, so I had the blogs already on my, my our office website, is I changed them up just a little bit, like change the title, change the intro or a little bit the ending or something like that. And then I had them as both, and I, st I still have done this up until recently, is would have it as a blog post on my Mom at 41 website, and then I would have it as a podcast episode. So I would literally sit down, I have a little bit of an intro, I would then read the blog post. Now, it was my word, so I know I've had people say like, oh my God, you read those? It seems like you're just talking. So it's, it doesn't have to sound like scripty or anything like that. You know, you're reading it. If you want to practice a few times, you can, but I just kind of, I just read it. And I would maybe ad lib and add a few parts here and there. And then I would have my end and I would have my call to action of either they would have what I do with Mama 41, it's called a Mama Action Step. So to give them something they can do and not just kind of listen and feel good and go, this is great and have some kind of emotional response, but actually do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also to subscribe to my newsletter, to subscribe to the podcast, to rate and review. So I give them that call to action at the end. But then, yeah, I also had as a blog post. And on the blog post, I would have a little, like, a, you know, click here if you'd like to listen to this episode on the podcast. On the podcast show notes page, I had a link saying, click here if you'd like to read this as a blog post. So that way, whichever way people want to consume it, written or audio, they had the option of both. And it, it was easy. Like, I basically, now I had a lot of blog posts. So I went through and I created a list. I'm like, okay, what are the most popular ones? Which ones do I kind of resonate with the most? And I just started going from there. And so my first, oh gosh, I think it was my first 24 episodes because I think I'm, I just recorded 108. So my first 24 were strictly blog posts. And I had no intention of doing guests. I mean, I thought, well, maybe at some point I'll do a guest episode. But, um, and then I did after that. But there's a lot of power in that. And don't think also too, for those that are listening right now to the webinar, that somehow a guest interview is better. I have a lot of my mom at 41 listeners that say they actually prefer often the ones that are just me talking and sharing a story. 
So yeah, so it was an easy way to get started. And then from there, I did all the creation stuff and then everything that you've now created with, with this podcast training program, Ed. And I'm going to just share a really quick story of a challenge that I encountered this week, which was, I believe it was on Monday. No, I'm sorry. Was that last week, Dr. Karen, that someone cracked into my website? That was last oh, week, wasn't yeah. it? Thursday. No, 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 dude. It was like a couple days ago, I think. Oh, was I'm so out of it. Yeah, okay. Like Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have multiple sites for Dr. Ed Osborne, for the Chiropractic Philanthropist, uh, for TCP Podcast Training. And some of them are hosted by GoDaddy, for example. And what happened was someone, um, a group, had actually uh, found a crack into my website. And what they did is they just went in and they inserted a piece of code of a hidden banner onto one of my, actually to two or three of my websites. Now here's the thing, Doc, who's, who's listening to this right now. Do you know why they did that? This is, and this is straight from GoDaddy tech support. They said, because my search engine optimization is so high with Google because they go, oh, because you have a podcast. It's so high. That's why they want into your site. Because what they were doing is they insert that code so they could hijack my SEO ratings, which means anytime someone searches Dr. Ed Osborne, anytime someone searched the chiropractic philanthropist, they, their website would show up along with my SEO. So they were kind of like piggybacking on my SEO. Don't worry, everything's completely secured, okay? But I wanted to use that as an example of how powerful and how Google is ranking podcast feeds. And that's why you, you know, on this image that I'm showing you here for podcast content, Karen is, you know, brilliantly, she has her blog, she has her podcast, um, and she's driving people to her website. So with her podcast, she's building an audience, then she drives them to her website to listen, to read her content, and then to sign up for her uh, newsletter as well. And that's exactly actually what I do. Um, to be honest with you, Doc, my whole purpose is to drive people to my uh, the Chiropractic Philanthropist website to listen to the podcast, sign up for one of my lists. Now, the reason I do that is because now I have their email and I can communicate with them. So then I provide them more value. Like maybe I just email my podcast to them. So this is one of the ways that we've actually, I've actually built a very large contact list or uh, email list with doctors in a very short time, actually in about six or seven months. And I'm actually going to be teaching a webinar just on those, they call them funnels, just on that and what I've learned from that on Thursday this week. So if you want to jump on that, I can show you how to do that. So I just wanted to show you this, you know, also with Dr. Karen, she brilliantly has here in the author section, uh, instead of just having her name, Dr. Karen Osborne, she has uh, inspiring interviews with um, podcast experts, you know, Deborah Tillman, Josh Shipp, uh, Carl on Ray. So really um, what they're, what's happening here is that every time someone searches one of these names on iTunes, now her podcast will show up as well. That's how you're uh, increasing your expertise. You're putting your, you're positioning yourself next to someone like Josh Shipp, who's had an actual reality show. Like these are, this is the way that it's done. I love all the explicit ratings on your podcast there, Dr. Karen. Yeah, I've been dropping some f bonds recently <laughs> on my solos. It's great, actually. It feels wonderful. Yeah. Well, but you know, it's a great point. <laughs> Podcasting, there's no rules. Okay. You can just, well, that's maybe one of the rules. Put an explicit on it. But the point is, is it's a unique expression of you. You create your own expression of chiropractic. There's no one giving you a script. There's no one saying, you know, this is the way it should be done. It's all you. And that's why it, you build your following because those people who listen to your podcast and follow you, they are basically, they're there because they, because it's you. It's real. It's authentic. There's nothing. I mean, there's nothing coercive about it. All right, so here's content. So everyone probably, if you've heard of the Chiropractic Philanthropist podcast, and by the way, I had zero listeners, zero experience when I started this in August last year, and um, I, I didn't know anyone, okay? I didn't know anyone in our profession, uh, maybe just a couple guys down the street. But within three months, like I said, I was actually, you know, I think within five months, I was on on a phone call with Jack Canfield, you know, uh, Nick Ortner, um, like these celebrities who, you know, if you told me five or six months before, I would be talking to someone like, you know, Grant Cardone, I would have said, you're freaking crazy. No way. I mean, my heart just jumped out of my chest when that, when I got that email. Now, I have taken a lot of time and done a lot of work. And what I've done is this is actually a, a screen capture of the inside my program. It's all the forms, emails, and agreements that I have. So I have sponsorship letters, how I actually monetize my podcast. Um, 
I have the confirmation emails. Everything I basically give to you, my trustworthy graphics on Fiverr to save you money. But the biggest one I want you to see here is you can actually see exactly the emails that I used to get these people onto TCP Podcast. And you can repurpose them and use them to get your guests. So this is the other way that you can get content. A lot of doctors come to me and say, Dr. Ed, there's no way I can ever get guests for my podcast. You'd be surprised how easy it is, okay? Can and I, I give you I actually, I've something? tested it. Sorry, Ed, can sure. I just interject with something? So my Absolutely. first guest, who was kind of at the top of when Ed showed the my iTunes page, um, his name is Josh Ship, and so I had heard Josh on a podcast about a year or two prior to him sending me an email. So he is a teen expert, they call him the Teen Whisperer. He's had a TV show, he has numerous books, he's a huge, huge speaker, very big in the kind of parenting world. And so he actually sent me an email, which was crazy, saying, hey, I saw, because his podcast launched around the same time as mine, so we were both at the top of the family and kids um, category, New Noteworthy in iTunes. So he sent me an email saying, hey, I saw your podcast, great work. Um, if you're ever thinking of being a guest, I'd love to help you out. And I got it, I was like, what? Holy crap, okay, uh, yes. And so that's how I went from then doing solo to guests. And so you might even have some that just see you and find you and wanna come on your podcast. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, again, for me, you know, it's just my personality that I, I like to interview people. I'm not, I mean, Dr. Karen has that unique ability that she can sit down and read a blog and it sounds very natural. She's a very good writer. Uh, I find I can actually do an interview and I'm just kind of a pragmatic guy. So I'll go through my list of questions and you know, and just get people to open up. And I, that's kind of my superpower. Dr. Karen's is a little different. But, you know, this is this is something also that I want to stress for doctors who are listening today, because at the end of the day, podcasts are fun, they're creative, they, they're a new expression of you and your office, and they are all about building your following and audience, okay? It's different marketing today, okay? It's not like when you go and you sit down and do a screening on the weekend anymore, and you book 100 new people to come into your office and you screen, you know, the... 80 of them and then you know 10 of them start care. This isn't the way it's done anymore. And I was listening to a, a webinar the other day of a multi multi millionaire and he was saying look at what you today in marketing you need to create an audience and a following. Give them value. So create an audience and a following that is podcasting at its core. Create a following, okay? And then give them value which is the content of your podcast and then you and then he goes essentially sell them a product. So your product, doctor, I would suggest to you is chiropractic and it's our message. And that's how it's done. Now those people are going to be either looking you up locally, so where you are, and we can, we can you know, again, in Libsyn, I would tweak the SEO so you would show up uh, on Google in, in, in your local area. But more importantly too, let's, let's face it, doc, we got to get out of the 5% of the population, or, you know, the 5% marginalization as chiropractors that we're only seeing in the population. This is bigger. I mean, if when you have someone who's going to be, imagine that emailing you and saying, you know what? I am so happy that I heard your podcast today, Doc. Uh, they're, they're in China or Hong Kong or something like that because this happens to me every day. I get these emails about how I really helped someone and how, they, how it changed their life or it was a message that they really needed to hear in that day. I had a doc from Turkey the other day. He's one of 700 chiropractors in the world or in Turkey, you know, and he was just like, you know, I feel so isolated. So things like that, you make that unique connection. And I know, Dr. Karen, you've even had experiences like that where people are emailing you and telling you how thankful they are. Yeah, I had, a, I had actually been away and a week, actually for a couple of days from you and the boys to a seminar uh, down in LA and uh, left. And I was like, it was about writing a book. I'm like, ah, who the hell am I to write a book? I can't do this. And it's going through the whole imposter syndrome. And and then I open up my phone and I hop onto Instagram and someone messaged me and said, hey, I'm a listener from Italy. Um, I love your podcast. I share it with all my English speaking friends because of course she's in Italy. And she said, I just wanna let you know, I just I thank you so much. And I was literally like looking at this because it came at such a perfect moment where I just almost started bawling on the planet. Like, people are gonna think I'm nuts sitting here. But you, and those are people that connect with you. You don't know how many or just on the sidelines, man. They're just, they're there listening and you are affecting and, and absolutely changing their life. Yes, absolutely. And and again, it's it's about getting those connections and building relationships 
and then you know basically maintaining those re relationships and adding value and you know one of the things like the, let's take a look here i mean this is this is actually podcast uh, these this is a uh, new and new and noteworthy in itunes and so you can see here we have four or five uh tcp podcast um, graduates who are at the very top of new and noteworthy in health. And that is so powerful. Look at look at what this is doing, not just for their office and their, you know, basically their celeb like status and upping their authority, but it's also, you know, really helping our, our uh, profession. Now, not only that is, so now they are at the top of new and noteworthy because we have a five step formula for getting docs there. And we're going to talk about how we do that. And if you just give you a few of those in a few, in a minute or two. But what it is, is now that they have these, if they want to market their podcast, they will simply email that, that podcast to their existing practice member base. Okay, so you have their emails and you send them that value, right? They can listen to your voice in between every, that, every week or every two weeks that they come in for a checkup. Or we all have doc those patients who disappear for six months. You can still send them your voice. You can have that intimate connection with them. Now, the other thing, way that you can market it is you can even SMS these. I mean, the text rate, the open rate is like 98%. So if you texted the URL for your web or for your uh, podcast to a patient, they will actually open that and it instantly starts playing and they start hearing your voice. So these are the ways that you can market um, market your podcast. There's other ways too that we can we can discuss, but you know, really what it is is about also placing it on your uh, your website so that it increases your search engine optimization. So when people are searching you in that given area, so like if they search Tulsa Chiropractor, your website shows up possibly. But not only that, your podcast shows up, they click on it, they listen to your voice, then from there they link to your website. Okay, or maybe, the, maybe your podcast, which is even more uh, valuable, your podcast is posted and cataloged on your website, so they listen to you and they, they're on your website, they're looking around and possibly they call and book an appointment time. And you would always, again, even on your podcast, you would have a call, strong, strong call to action. So those people would uh, constantly be hearing your voice and saying, you know, give us a call if we can help you with, you know, whatever it might be that your given theme is on that day. And if I can add then too, Dr. O, when people find your podcast, they start binge listening. Yes. You'll see it in your lips and stats. You'll see that there'll be five of an episode, five of the next, five of the next. So you'll see that it's like, you know, different people that have popped on, probably 500 people. They found an episode. They loved it. They found it in all the different ways that it talks about to market it. And then from there, when they hear your voice, when it's just your voice in their earbuds or driving in the car, there's an intimacy that's created where they feel like they know you. And when, when, when people feel like they know you, they feel like they can trust you, they feel like you're going to care, those are going to be ones that they want to pick up the phone of all the chiropractors in your area and you then and would be thinking these are the ones, or this is the one that I want to go see and check out. Yes. And it's, and it's interesting too, to me is, you know, cause I'm, I, look, I'm a chiropractor and I, I love numbers. I measure ROI on everything. Don't we, Dr. Karen? Yes, we do. <laughs> we measure ROI <laughs> in our office. Here's the thing though, it's getting more and more challenging every day to measure ROI because people nowadays are touching multiple things before they come into your office. Oh, I heard you, your podcast. I saw you on, on AM radio, or I heard you on AM radio, or I read your article in the newspaper. I visited your website. So it's really difficult. We used to just go, you know, go, okay, well, it has to be the last thing they touched before they came in the office. But people are, these days, they're just really, they're, they're, um, they're just sponges for everything that you offer before they make a decision to actually call or book a time. So this is one of the main advantages of podcasting as well is that you have that, again, as Karen said, that intimate connection because there's not, your voice is 60 times more powerful than any website. So you can go on and they can look at your bio. I always go onto doctor's websites. I look at the about page. I read about the doctors. I, that, that's to me, I want to learn more about them. But imagine when they can hear your voice and they can hear about your expert. They think of you as that expert as well. Or if you can position yourself like next to other experts in the community, because that's an amazing thing too about podcasting. Let's say there's a local fitness expert in your community and you interview them on your podcast. 
So it's Joe Fitness. And you interview him. If you have his name in the title of your podcast, every time someone searches Joe Fitness in that area, your podcast shows up. So people aren't searching you necessarily, searching chiropractic. They could be searching other people and that, that your podcast will show up and they will learn about you. So philanthropist, you know, my whole story, you know, I'm going to give you this in a, in a nutshell. Okay. I had a rock and busy practice with my wife, Dr. K. You know, we built this practice from scratch and our dream was to have the family practice. And it was our dream. We built, we built it uh, from scratch. The thing was, you know, right at the pinnacle of the time that we were in, you know, incredibly smoking busy, I got sick. Okay. And when I got sick, the more I tried to actually insert myself back into practice after having surgery and going through all these these difficult situations with my own health i found it very challenging to to get back into practicing at the intensity that i i was doing before and it was difficult for me because practice for me was all about connection it was about being able to help people heal with my hands and yet i i love chiropractic so much and i still wanted to be part of that so what I did was that's where the, the impetus of the chiropractic philanthropist came. And that was about giving back, but connecting on a different level. And that was actually with my, my fellow chiropractors instead of patients on a daily basis. And it's been, really been a dream come true. Cause I, I tell you, doc, I mean, if you, if you can imagine yourself at the top of iTunes, if you can imagine your podcast out there, you know, your audio, your voice, you can see that, you know, you can start to build uh, relationships, you can build that authority, you can connect with other people in, uh, in your community on a way that you've never imagined before. You know, you can see like, yeah, again, I mean, I, I, my website alone, by using my podcast, I get 4,500 uh, unique visits from doctors each month. You know, I've been on the phone with John Demartini, all these different amazing people, David Allen, John Gray. I mean, it's it's really a dream come true for me. But I want you to think about it, Doc. I mean, it took me only three months to do this. There's docs out there who have been building their authority in our in our community, our profession, I should say, for 15, 20, 30 years. Okay, you can do it in a very short time. It's a incredible tool to do that and do it on a local basis within your own community. It doesn't have to be within our profession. So yeah, I get these emails all the time. Dr. Osborne connecting with you has been a blessing. Uh, you know, I have, this is from uh, Dr. Rios. He says, I have very much appreciated all you are doing for the profession. And you can see that people really think or doctors really see that you have incredible value you're adding with your podcast. Okay. Just, just like if you were to re write a blog like Dr. Karen does, but now again, you're having that um, different connection using your voice. So imagine yourself, doc, getting these emails every day. How inspiring is that? All right, so let's go and talk a little bit about your podcast and developing it so that you, you can actually market it in a way that is authentic to you. So Dr. Karen, I mean, one of the, wouldn't you agree that passion has to be the key to your podcast? Absolutely. I mean, passion is going to drive everything, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not really excited about doing it, when it's maybe, you know, you've had a busy day in practice, if you've got a kid, you're with your kids, and here you're sitting down to edit stuff at 10 o'clock at night, if you don't have passion, what the hell is going to drive you, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it really comes down to, to defining and we always do this and we'll, we'll go into our, you know what, I'm going to share it right now. I want to go and actually jump to my Facebook page, the community. So let's see if I can do this real quick. helps us actually get to the top of iTunes new and noteworthy. So that is one of the key elements as well of getting to the part of uh, top of new and noteworthy on iTunes. And you have eight weeks after you put out your first podcast to get in there and stay there. So great uh, episode here from Dr. Jason. You can see here's Dr. Nancy Tarlow, and she's just coming out with her production. She'll be up and running within a week, likely, because she has part of my, my accelerator program. So I'm going to get her all set up. 
but you can see here that we've all, she's put up three different artworks for her podcast and you can see we've all actually commented on that. So Dr. Karen has put in her, her couple cents, me too. And this is what we do to make sure that, again, another secret to getting to the top of iTunes is actually they place you at the top based on aesthetic. So they will manually put you there based on how your artwork looks too. So this is such an important key element. We give tons of feedback and uh, make sure that everyone gets to the top. Here's another one with Dr. Hansen. He's he's just working on his artwork and we've all had some feedback. Dr. Dr. Deprez, uh, let's see here. And then we also have updates that we include as well. Anything that changes because podcasting is constantly changing. So the lifetime membership with TCP allows you to get the um, you get all of the updates as things change. So for example, with the recording software on GarageBand, everything changed. There was an update. I had to actually go in. I didn't have to, but I went in, I created all new video tutorials on how you could do that in a simple, easy way. Um, you can see here too that I've included, we're developing what's called a uh, TCP podcast page. So everyone who's a graduate of TCP podcast training are all listed on the on this page people can go there those 4500 doctors who are going and visiting my site can go in here you know click on your podcast and find you and just listen to your podcast subscribe and that helps up your seo as more people are listening dr Kerry here making a joke so you should be shirtless doctor right on that um <laughs> <laughs> lots of different things here so lots of little tips we we add so again this is the way that we communicate with each other this is the way that we spread the message and uh, I'm gonna just head back to the slides here for a sec. And that way, you know that every time that you create a podcast, you, you think about, well, what would that that avatar, what would that Joe chiropractic, what would he want to hear? What would he want to listen to? And trust me, it seems a little silly at first, but you, when you write this down and you manifest that and you talk to that person every time you get on the air, I mean, even on this webinar, it's tough for me sometimes to just imagine that I'm talking to, you know, 15, 20 or 30 docs at a time. So, so that helps actually with uh, not only uh, creating your podcast and the content, but it also helps with the listenership. Yeah, so I would you, say for, if I can add to that then too, sure. Dr. Ed, so that for me was key when I was doing solo episodes because it's like me sitting down in the basement talking to myself. So it was even more of a of a importance, if you will, to really understand who your audience is and who that person, that avatar, I should say, is so that when I would sit there and record, I literally would see myself sitting in front of that particular woman like over coffee talking to her and it makes a difference it's it, it's going to sound different when it comes out that way and people listen to the episode absolutely so you know, i think we've answered you know how people get the content i think we've answered you know what is the value of a podcast like what is a podcast so we've answered that and you know really the last thing is how difficult is it to actually get started and it's really not that tough i mean there's a little bit of elbow grease at the start and I'm not gonna lie to you. And there's a little bit of time that's in, that's created in terms of coming up with your, you know, your recording. But here's the thing: the podcasts are evergreen. So when was the last time you went to a room and spoke to 200 people in a day, and then that same talk that you had or lecture was out there for everyone to listen to every day for you know infinity, <laughs> you know? So that if you even doc, even if you had only 50, like, um, which is really low, but if even if you had only 50 people listening to your podcast every day, then I mean, that's still 50 people who you are connecting with that you wouldn't have connected with before. And you didn't really have to do anything else like pack up, you know, um, you know, your, your slides and pack up all of your information and go and do a, a lecture or workshop. Not that I'm saying there's not value in those, but you can do this in addition. So when you're looking at podcasting, you know, come up with something that's creative about your passion, come up with something that's, you know, um, like a, what, 
you know, your podcast is about should be in the name. So the chiropractic philanthropist, I, I wanted to hack. I actually considered chiropractic charity. <laughs> but it sounded really. Oh silly. God. I don't remember that one. That <laughs> I should oh, show the first artwork. Yeah. You, yeah. you remember the first artwork I had? My first uh, artwork was like a, a, like a, like a picture of a guy smoking a pipe. It was like, yeah, it was horrible. Oh, God. Horrible. I so, think I've, I think I've blocked it out. It was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah. So yeah. there's a process of creation, but it's fun to think about who you want to speak to. And when it comes down to artwork, it's really simple. I give you, and you know, like I said, we go through the Facebook community. We give you the, if you go to Fiverr, it costs you 10, 15 bucks to get your artwork made up. Even my artwork, I'm going to revamp it and I'm going to put it out there again uh, in about, uh, about uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe. Uh, a couple uh, of weeks. Do you have your headphones on, Dr. Headphones on, Dr. K? I do. Hmm, I'm getting a reverb. Okay. Okay. So, Sorry. So new and noteworthy. Again, that is basically the eight weeks. Once you launch your podcast, you can get to the very top of iTunes where you have that opportunity. We get you there. And I think we just had a doc launch last week and it's already in the top 10. Uh, we have also Taylor Smith with... Uh, uh, chiropractic strategies, chiropractic strategies. Um, or marketing strategies, marketing it's strategies. called, and he was actually number exactly. two in New and Noteworthy, uh, uh, so really high up there, up there. Did amazing job. job. And again, we and always go through the feedback, and that's what the Facebook page, page is for, and we share. we share. Here's the big thing, too. Big Don't, thing right, now right now, you're probably now thinking, you're Doc, probably this is too much. I can't handle it. <laughs> okay. This is my son and I, actually, uh, when we tried to build a snowman the other year, and... It was horrible. It was, it was not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? Um, yeah. This is a big blob. It was. But you know what? He didn't care. He loved it. And what I'm, my point is, don't get paralyzed. I'm going to take out most of the challenges for you, such as getting you set up on lips, and which means to, seems to be the biggest block. We're all as a community going to help promote you. We're all there to support each other as a community. And that's the real value in what we do here at TCP Podcast Training. So don't get paralyzed. Don't get paralyzed. Just, you just you know, know better done, done and good than, than perfect, perfect and not done. All right. All right. Biggest, biggest other biggest question I get is, Dr. Ed, what do we Dr. use? What, do what am I going to have to invest for resources? For okay, microphone. There, I usually recommend one of two. So we have the Audio Technica ATR2100. That's what I'm using today, and I always use. It's included when you enroll in the program, but if, if uh, you search it on Amazon, you'll find it. Uh, blue, uh, the Blue Yeti is a, a little bit more expensive. I don't recommend it. I've actually had a few patients or people who have uh, purchased it and then actually went on to get the Audio Technica. So it looks cool, but I think the Audio Technica, even though it's less expensive, is a better value and a better mic. Headphones, 20 bucks. Boom. You do need a, I do recommend a boom or a stand. And the boom or stand is basically like what I'm using today. These are very inexpensive. A pop filter basically takes out the vibrations, the clicks, the pops, the wind noise from your voice. So it sounds more professional. Those are about 15 bucks. Can you mute your mic, Dr. K? I sure can. Thank you. Okay. And so the, um, the pop filter, so basically the pop filter, oh, that, sorry, the, uh, the arm, basically the arm is there basically so that you can have an equal distance from the microphone, which is so important. The reason that we do that is like if I move away from my microphone right now, you can see how the sound changes. People will listen and subscribe to your podcast based on audio quality, obviously. So we want the best quality possible. And these are really simple ways that you can do it. These, this is, I think it was 10, maybe, maybe 25 bucks on Amazon. The recording and editing software, I mean, GarageBand comes on iTunes. Dr. K, is your you mic mean, on? You mean on, on Apple? I just turned it back on so I could talk. Oh, okay. You, I booted it out? What's going on? What's that idea? No, no, you just, you're, I hear a reverb, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, you said GarageBand is on iTunes. You mean on Mac, on Apple. Okay. Yeah. So the, um, can you mute your mic one more time? Because the screen share the screen switches share too. Switches to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So GarageBand, yeah, it's free. It's on Apple, as Dr. K mentioned. Audacity is for PC or Mac. And it's, again, free editing software. So these are both 
you know, there's no investment. iTunes accounts for tagging those or like emblazing your uh, podcast with your artwork and title. I mean, that's again free. It's on iTunes uh, software when you're you sign up for an iTunes account. And actually, I do uh, all the ID3 tagging when people sign up. So I actually do that for their first episode if need be. So here's essentially how a podcast works. So as a summary, I have an audio file that I create, which is my podcast. I do that on my laptop through an interview. I put it onto Libsyn, which is basically an offsite podcast host that is $15 a month to store your, your um, information, your audios. From there, it is as soon as I put my podcast onto Libsyn, it is automatically uploaded onto iTunes. It is automatically uploaded onto my SoundCloud account and to Stitcher. The only one I pay for out of these three is SoundCloud. And uh, that's only because I have a lot of content coming out. And I think it's about 10 bucks a month. From there, doctors can actually download my podcast. So via, I will send it to them via email. I will send it, they can visit my website. They can go to LinkedIn. It's connected to that too, to Twitter, to Facebook. I can text it to you. I put it on YouTube, Instagram. This. So I want you to imagine your office doc. Here's how you market this. You put your podcast onto Libsyn. It goes to iTunes for the 550 million people to subscribe to and to possibly listen to. It goes to SoundCloud, equally uh, high subscriber. Um, Stitcher. All of these uh, platforms are going to be in all the vehicles in 2016. They're in mobiles as well. Next, you share your podcast on Vimeo, on YouTube, on Facebook. Now, Doc, you might be thinking, well, I don't have time to do all this. There is social media software that will share all of these for you, such as Hootsuite. And um, you can actually, and I have tutorials for all of that, but here's the thing, your, your team can do this in probably about 10 minutes a week. Okay, they can actually schedule these to go out. It doesn't take much time at all. So you can, there's tons of ways that you can market your podcast and get it out there. So this is basically the entire enrollment page for everyone. If you look through here, you can actually see there's a video. It's a 21 minute video. It covers a lot of what we just covered now um, today. The modules that we have in the training, the first module is all about the creative. We show you how to create your podcast. We cover in depth. None of the webinars or the, the, I should say the tutorials that we have are any longer than say six minutes at the most. They're really like, I'm just no fluff. Okay. That's just the way I am. Very pragmatic. <clears throat> I give you everything I use to create my podcast, to monetize it, to make money from that podcast as well. So uh, then on the second module, we go through all the technology. Now I'm going to take out a lot of this for you just simply because I'm going to set up your Libsyn account for you. And I am also going to get you submitted to iTunes and Stitcher for anyone who enrolls today. So that is again, just in itself, that is a, uh, that's a $400 value. Okay. Business and marketing. So we don't just get you started and then we leave you hanging. Okay. We show you actually how to market your podcast. There's a full module on marketing your podcast on the business of podcasting. Some people, some doctors want to actually create maybe like an online program that they can sell to people, like to patients, to a, not just about attracting new people to their office. And this is talk, what we talk about making money while you sleep. So, you know, even from my podcast, believe it or not, I generate a lot of income from my podcast. I got an email the other day from a doctor who I helped out and they're going to be writing me a very big check in about 30 days. So you can do this too, doc. If I can do it, I had no experience. You can do it. Okay. So here's, here's some testimonials uh, that you can go through. Again, if you're clicking on that add to cart button, you can go through all this whole page. You know, we have Chris Burfield here, strategic marketer. He's got his podcast out there, which is uh, market from the heart. Dr. Kerry, big heart, that, that man, he's, he's amazing. He, he launched, I'm so proud of him. He launched SIG talks and that, that podcast is just crushing it. I remember being, you know, uh, texting back and forth with him at two in the morning, uh, lying in bed, trying to think of ideas or thinking of ideas of how we could create his podcast and really continue the legacy of Jim Sigafoos. And I think he's done that wonderfully. I'm so proud of just being a small part of that and, and allowing him to helping him get his podcast up and running. We got Dr. Joe Criscola with his health hero podcast, Dr. Hudak is killing it. He's crushing. I see his podcast out there all the time. He was up and launched in 10 days. So if you got, if you got the, 
the time you can definitely you know uh, fire through it really quickly dr. Jason Jones amazing consistency he's seeing he, he some of the guests I haven't even been able to get on he's had on his show I haven't even been able to get the same guest quality I guess he's had so he says this training is a 10 out of 10 it's very easy to do dr. Tabor Smith uh, with Genesis uh, chiropractic software he's he's helping them out with um, the podcast which is uh, chiropractic strategic uh, strategies or I should say marketing True Health uh, with Dr. Kyle Gull Gulledge just came out this week. I was listening to this podcast this week and wow, I cannot believe how good some of these people are. They're making, you know, they're standing on my shoulders. I love it. Okay, so yeah, you hear some of the people at the top of new and noteworthy, you could see here and they that's where you get your real, uh, you know, start to build your real listenership. So here's the bonuses and let's go through these. So it says 1484, it's actually more than that because I'm throwing in the mic as well with that. So here's what you get. You basically get my common sense ROF system. Now I'm getting amazing feedback. I've had over 300 doctors actually jump on and purchase this program itself. And it's really easy. It's about how you can actually communicate with your patients on a way that is not coercive, that you don't feel like you're reading scripts all the time. Although I do give you my scripts, but I want you to personalize them. And it's um, incredible video tutorials on how I built my family practice. And those people convert right into uh, wellness care as well, if that's what you're looking for. 297 value, which yours included when you sign up with TCP podcast training. I have my creating Facebook ads funnel. So I have had docs email me, Dr. Ed, how do you create pod, uh, you know, ads on Facebook? And um, so what I did is I said, well, why don't I just put the, you know, video tutorials together? So this is the quickest way you can build actually your Facebook fan page. You can actually advertise or display on Facebook your and sponsor your podcast as well. Any videos, I give you all the secrets so that you can either do it free or save a lot of money doing it. And I've made all the mistakes, spent all the money and made all the, had all the failures. So I learned how to do this very efficiently. It's yours and I give it to you. It's $197 value with the program today. Here's the accelerator program. So this is exclusive. This is only today. Okay. It's a $400 value and this is only for people who sign up right now. This basically I, I will do for, um, I will do full setup of that Libsyn account for you. I will tweak it for SEO perfection. I call it. I will get you submitted for approval on iTunes and Stitcher, and I will give you guidance on how to get to, like personal guidance on how to get to the top of iTunes new and noteworthy, and certainly make sure that we're sharing uh, your podcast as well. This is the fastest way to get up and running. We call it the Accelerator Program. And uh, yeah, this is the first time I've ever included that. Last bonus, I know, bonus after bonus. Last bonus is I am coming out with a new program. It's called TCP Video Podcast Training. No, do not underestimate the power of iTunes video podcasting. Okay, this, you know, you know what the, the number one video podcast is right now is actually TEDx or TED Talks, I should say. So TED Talks, you could actually get yourself because it's so new, you can get yourself positioned right up there at the top of iTunes video podcasting with them. My TV show is coming out within in the next two weeks. And what I've done is created tutorials on how I did it. And I guarantee I'm going to get at the top of iTunes when I come out. So this is new, it's innovative, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to include that for you. It's $590 value. Now, not only that, but you can take these videos and you can repurpose them onto your YouTube channel because YouTube is still king. Now, and of course, we're going to fire off that mic to anyone who signs up today. So there's a couple options you can do. If you click on the one-time investment, it's $725 for the program. We do have a 30-day money-back, 100% risk-free guarantee. Um, I got to be honest with you. Nobody ever refunds on this program. It is solid, okay? We have a community and uh, nobody ever has a challenge with any of what we, we just all come together and help each other out. We have a, and it's a lifetime access, by the way. So you get all the updates, you get the lifetime access. We are going to be moving to a membership subscription. So soon it will be monthly, uh, probably starting this fall, a monthly fee for any new subscribers to the program as we start to get over, say, the 150 mark with uh, members. There's a two payment option. It works out to two installments of 425, or there's a four payment option. It works out to four installments of 274. So it's really not a huge investment when you think about that. All it really takes is one lifetime. What is one lifetime wellness patient worth to you in your office? 
I mean, is it worth $725? Probably a lot more than that. So this is actually a really, really low investment when you think about it. I, I remember sitting down and actually my interview with uh, Dr. Janet, or sorry, with Janet Switzer who helped sell 500 million books for Jack Canfield. And she told me when I showed her my program, because I'm like, what do you think of this? Like, you get someone like that on the phone, you talk to them. And I said, what do you think of this? And she goes, it's not scalable. <laughs> she goes, you're not charging enough. I go, well, what would you suggest? She's like, 3,000. I'm like, you're crazy. She's like, no. No, that's that's not enough. So the program, I think, you know, the, for the value, I think it's there. And if you want to be part of our group, I would love to have you and support you. And I would be so excited to have you on the TCP podcast train. So I get about three or four minutes, maybe five minutes, and we're going to answer some questions. So if anyone's still on the line there, Dr. Karen. Yeah, I actually just pulled, I just kind of posted up saying last call for questions. Uh, I want to actually also to invite or just to acknowledge Sandra. She just wanted to join the TCP family. So super Great. excited for you, Sandra. And um, yeah, if there's any other questions, now is the time. And if you type them in, I'll just basically read them to Ed here live and we can get them answered. Um, I think Ed's obviously, Ed, you went through tons of stuff and lots of good information, maybe answered a lot of questions that people already had. But if there's any other ones, like people had some some questions about What's the difference between Audacity and Adobe and GarageBand, which you talked about? Um, they asked if you need a mic, which you talked about as well, too. Um, question I had then, too, from Sandra, although she's kind of said, all right, that's it, I'm jumping in, is kind of, you talked about this a little bit, too. It's like, what's the ROI and what, what's your results been and that? And again, the importance and the power in being able to build community and an audience and a tribe with podcasting that is so different and standing there at a screening and talking to one person and hoping that maybe they'll come in the office and get checked. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, podcasting is just, oh, it's so much fun to be able to expressively, expressively, you know, talk about your message. And in this case, obviously, for those that are listening, to be able to to talk chiropractic. Yeah, and I, I think, am I still screen sharing, Dr. K? No, nope, it's you just you and me. Oh, you were like picking your nose too and everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, um, okay. So, you know, I can give you a really great example of that too. And that is that, you know, the, um, I sat down with a new, a new practice member the other day, uh, first time never met. And I started, well, let me, I'm going to explain to you what chiropractic is. And she, she goes, no, no, you don't, don't, don't worry about it. I know what chiropractic is. I watched all of your videos on your website. It's the same that we're seeing with chiropractors who are doing podcasts. You place your podcast on your website. It's the same. They're getting that intimate connection. It's tough to put your finger on that ROI, isn't it? And, and like I said, I mean, it, it's kind of like breaking it down to the minutia, to just going, okay, I see the, I see the investment, but all it really takes is it's going to be one person, one lifetime, like one person that you change their life and they become that lifetime member in your practice. And, uh, and uh, I mean, it's really, so, there's so many different angles on how you can use podcast audio to educate, to retain, to reactivate patients. I mean, get creative for gosh sakes. Let's say you want to reactivate patients and you have their email their, or their phone, or, you know, their, their cell. Create a podcast on how to, on about reactivating, you know, hey, we have this event and we want to, you know, we would love to see you and send a special message to them, email it. SMS it. There's so many different ways that you can use the podcast. And I think, you know, gone are the days really to Ed of like, I do a talk and then therefore so many show up, so many sign up, so many come in, so many start care. It just doesn't work that way anymore. People don't really connect that way. This is really the future. I say the future. This is the present moment podcasting and social media and connecting them all together. So like you said, speaking to a group of 50 people or speaking once in your basement with a guest without, and now that's being broadcast always. So people can keep seeing that. And then they're excited. They don't just sit down and tell their friend over dinner, but oh, I saw this carpenter who heard them speak. Now they're actually sharing that, so putting up, up on social media, and they've shared it with 2,000 other Facebook friends. You know, what is the investment there? I mean, that's huge. And you didn't have to go and do any extra work. Yeah. You didn't have to go from those 50 people to the 1950 other of her friends that she's now shared those with because she's done it organically for you. And she's been, she's now being part of your community. That's huge, huge. And I mean, here's the thing too. How many times have you had a patient, you come in and it's rock and busy. It's that time between four and five in the afternoon. And, and you know, 
people are showing up late, people are showing up early, you're smoking busy, and then someone gets off the table and they go, Dr. Ed, I just saw my medic and I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. And you don't, you know, my heart, I just like, I wanna, I wanna help them, I wanna sit there and I wanna talk to them and consult with them. But in the moment, you can still do that time. Let's set up a private time that we can sit down and discuss this. But in that moment, you can say, hey, can we forward you this amazing audio podcast, this podcast that I did on, you know, cr controlling your blood sugar, on, you know, getting off of uh, high blood high blood pressure medication, whatever it might be that you've created, you can forward that podcast to them. It's not like handing them a brochure anymore, right? So now they have that, again, they think, you know, they're, they're seeing the value, they see that you care. Not only that, let's say they receive it and they go, oh, this is, this. I got to send this to my friend. So they just simply forward that email. They forward that by that text that you sent them. It's that simple. It's viral for gosh sakes. And then they're like, hey, check out what my chiropractor is doing. Or they just assume that all chiropractors do this. I mean, it's pretty cool stuff when you think about it. Yeah, you will absolutely stand out from the crowd when you do these things, right? From when we were blogging, you used to do video, video blogs and then now into podcasting, uh, you know, you will stand uh, so uh, out of the pack of everyone else that's in your community. Um, it's, you know, it's so it's the way to do it right now. And it's fun. It's fun, fun, fun. Cool. Any other questions at all for anyone? Any specific questions? I'm going to be jumping on a call, another tele teleconference call in about a half hour. So I'll, I'll stick around for another few minutes. What else can we talk about podcasting, Ed? Well, I just like saying the word podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing cool for me is... Is, is, you know, a lot of people just simply don't even, like uh, docs might be going, well, you know, I may talk to a, to a, po a person in my, in my practice and they go, I don't know what a podcast is. And they go, oh, well, well, you know, probably they think maybe 30% of people know what a podcast is, you know, yeah. and, and of those, maybe only half of them have ever listened to one. So, so a lot of you might be thinking, well, then uh, there's, there, that's very limited, but it's actually, in fact, it's, it's not. It means that we have an yeah. incredible potential growth. And if I can interject too, Ed, that's a great educational opportunity. I've probably had two people in the last week that go, what's this podcast saying? I go, give me your phone. I go, what? I go, give me your phone. <laughs> Swipe it, unlock it. And I go, this is a podcast app that purple. I go, that's what that is. Push it. I go, let's, we're going to search mom at 41. And they go, oh my God, that's you. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they, they go, holy crap. And then they go, great, let me subscribe you. So I've subscribed them. <laughs> subscribe to the podcast and they start listening and you know I had someone actually because I, I also teach essential oils class she came to my class um actually I was just as you had me muted and I'm like answering questions she oh by the way Sandra said have a good afternoon look forward to working with you Sandra awesome. we are so stoked for you you can love podcasting but I was just checking messages and she is like she's sending me in her order of stuff and she goes by the way I checked out your podcast she's like I love it you swear. She's like, I like this card too. <laughs> you know, it just it, it's a chance for you to show who you are. Whether, you know, you want to be a little bit more straight laced or like me, I'm just kind of an open book. When I podcast now, that vulnerability to me is just who I am. And um, I can't always do that in the office. I can't always drop an F bomb with kids around, obviously. But um, you know, again, it was just it, there was like a different sense of like, oh my God, you have a podcast. It's so cool. But if people don't know what a podcast is, then show them what it is. Show them what it is. Everyone who comes to the office that day, your CA could be like, hey, let me see your phone. They go, what? I don't know, just give me your phone. And they go, by the way, have you seen Dr. So-and-so's podcast? Isn't this cool? Go ahead and subscribe, right? You give a button right on your, your website. Click and subscribe to the podcast. People yeah. will check out that stuff before they decide to come in. So yeah. You, you can see on mine, like, I mean, I listened to a podcast this morning before I got on this webinar when I headed to the gym. So these are, these are the four and the little red, red notification means there's a new podcast to be downloaded. It was already uploaded, like it, it gives you the notification that there's a new podcast there. It's there every morning that you can actually jump on those. So that that's again the power of having your, your, your basically in the pocket, the back pocket of all of your patients right now. And um, not only that, but if I was to click on one of these and I was to look at the show notes, you could actually see that the URL for your web, my website is there. So the URL for your website doc would be there. And they click on that and their mobile will take you right to your website or to the, to, to the doctor's website. 
Yeah. How about you can have a link on there in the show notes too of just like click here to book an appointment. Maybe you have an online booking system, they can book right there. Or click here to call through to our team so they can take care of you. I mean, that's that's again, like you said, it's in the palm of their hand. Free so why consultation. not use the technology that's there? Yep. Yeah, I mean that and person is just just listened to you for the last twenty or thirty minutes, and now they they see you in a different light. They see you as an expert. Why would they look up someone else? Why would they go to someone else now that they've heard your voice? They just click on that URL and they go uh, they go immediately and they set up the consultation with you. They walk in, they think they already feel like they know you. How many times have you heard that, Karen? Where people you speak to that have heard your podcast, they think. Hey, I already know. I already know you. I feel like I know. Yeah. Hey, they go. Hey, you sound just like you do in your podcast. I'm like, yeah, dude, because that's my voice. Like, I don't <laughs> put on a voice. People will say to us, like, what's your microphone like? And think it's somehow we have this expensive setup that you know, like, auto tunes our voice to sound really cool. And um, the bottom line is, it's you know what? It's understanding who you're speaking to, who's your avatar, your purpose. You've passion behind it. You're consistent when you're putting out your episodes. And you have a ton of fun with it and you will see the results. And it might not be you speak to one person, one person lists a podcast and they come in as a new, new patient, but you will start to build that audience. And believe me, there's people that we've had that have come into the practice, even though Ed's not in the practice because they've heard the podcast, either Ed's or mine. So it is and, absolutely happening. And that's, the, if that's an interesting fact too, is that it's, it's, it's so interesting too how quick you can actually get the results. I've never seen anything like it except for going and doing a screening. Okay. The reason I, you know, you go and do a screening is you connect with that person on a one to one basis. But my gosh, that's a lot of work. I got to set up. I got to guess. I spend my whole, like, it's a lot of energy. I got to spend my whole weekend at a trade show. It's exhausting. Then I come in to my practice and I, I'll screen all those people and hopefully, you know, some of them will stick. With, with the podcast, it's completely different. You teach, you know, you you do your podcast one time, and then you can market it in so many ways. Plus, it's always it's also evergreen. It's out there, so it's a completely different way of of thinking about marketing. And it's really inexpensive. I mean, gosh, I mean, what is? It? I had a doc I was on the phone with the other day. He wants he's been doing a radio show every Saturday for the last year and a half in I think it was Chicago. He wants to take all of those audios and create a podcast. Beautiful idea. Because he goes, I'm only on the air for a half hour. I mean, I remember when we were doing it, Karen, and for a half hour, I think we were paying about 1200 bucks. Like it's, yep. it works, but now poof, it's gone after a half hour. It doesn't work that way with podcasting. You are out there consistently and you're building your audience. Yeah, awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to end wrap up the webinar because I'm going to be getting on a teleconference with the master circle in about a half hour. So I need, I'm going to need to think about what I'm going to talk about.